I love the story of how you two met because it's it's you know in the in the land of swipe the world of swipe that we live in you actually met on a train station is that right? Not Angie. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was yeah. so sorry. sorry. I was still with you. This is just part of them. Yeah, oh, you actually met there. him on He's the handsome. station. I did. I, like, this is like a, a romantic movie. So divorce, two kids, two-year-old, eight-year-old, no hope. I was hungover, <laughs> sitting at, Man uh, uh, at Euston Station, sort of a misty December evening, uh, on my way back to Manchester, and I'm in, in, in a coffee shop, and I'm like, oh, I've got a hangover because I've just been to a <laughs> Christmas party. I hadn't taken my eyelashes off from the night before, you can imagine. So it's <laughs> kind of hanging off, dangling there. <laughs> and then this guy walks in, I thought, oh. I would. And uh, <laughs> anyway, anyway, I went back to my steamy coffee and I went, and this shadow came over. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, he's going to sit opposite me. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And then he sort of sat back and, st sat back and started to talk to me. Did but he, he wasn't chatting me up, he was oh. just being polite. Oh, and I had a spicy meatball soup and he had miso. <laughs> and I was saying how naff a miso was and he should try my spicy meatball. I don't know whether that's code, <laughs> <laughs> but it works. And so he chatted away to me and he said, um, do you want my number? And I went, what for? <laughs> <laughs> and he went, you really have been off the dating scene, haven't you? And I went, yeah. So I took his number and then um, I thought, do, I don't know whether people play games and they don't return the call or don't text till three or four yeah. days. So I phoned well, my How long friend. had it been since you'd been in a relationship? Oh, it'd been a long time, two years. Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't know whether anything, anything was working. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, my, my heart was definitely, it was pounding. Did and he, I was, did I he text like you back straight away then? No, well, I had to, he left it to me, didn't he? So yeah. I had this number and I didn't know what to do with it. So about five minutes later, I texted him. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me it was on your train. <laughs> no, he was going somewhere else. And then, and then I went back, back up north and I sort of thought, right, I've texted him now. I felt like a teenager. Yeah. And I kept looking at my phone thinking, oh, this is ridiculous. He's not going to text me But that me must back. have done you so much good as well. Because, I mean, this is something that we can relate to, really. When, you, when you've... You've had children, your relationship hasn't gone the way in your head you've hoped it would. You found mm. yourself a sing single mum. Postnatal depression is something mm. that both yeah. Stacey and I can massively relate to. Um, you feel utterly wretched and that no one would be looking at you anyway. Mm. And you have this tall, dark, handsome stranger yeah. gives you his number at a train station. No, that's why I said, what for? <laughs> <laughs> Are you a plumber or something? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how was it difficult for you to sort of make that leap again, to trust I th again? I think you have to like yourself again, don't you? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, you that, do. That's it's the, the process it, in th itself. Yeah, isn't it? and I think when somebody does something like that, you, you start to realise how you've lost your confidence and yeah. your self-esteem. Mm. Um, and I definitely lost all of that. And, uh, uh, you know, during sort of postnatal um, depression, I, you know, I really, I didn't want to work again. And I had this baby lying next to me uh, and I, I couldn't relate to her very, so very briefly. Um, and it, it, it's, a, it's a tough one, really, because if, if we're going to go on to really how you deal with that, I mean, yeah, that was great. I met Martin and... Boy, did that boost my confidence. Yeah. But before that, there was a very long journey. Um, did you try counselling in the period before that? Do you know what I did? Mm. I think there was one morning, cause, and also it's January, it's the worst month. Yeah. The worst yeah. month. Cold, and and Pollyanna was about 12, yeah. no, 10 yeah. weeks old. And, uh, and we're in Manchester, so it's even darker and more miserable. And um, I just woke up and I thought, I can't feel my legs. I can't feel my legs because I don't want to, because I don't want to walk mm. and I don't want to get out of bed mm. and I don't want to be a mum. Yeah. And uh, I just thought, if I, don't, if I don't do something for myself now, it's going to be that downward spiral into yeah. the darkness. So something from somewhere made me realise that it is down to you. You have yeah. to dig deep. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, but you reached out and you got help. Yeah. Which so that was a big step. I literally huge. got out. I did. I made myself get out of bed that morning. Mm. And I think if I hadn't have, I would have been in a much worse place. Yeah. And uh, I just went downstairs, went on the computer, found the closest, you know, sort of counselling service yeah. there was, and I went straight away. So I, didn't meant, I didn't talk to anyone about it. I didn't lean on anyone because I thought... What happens is you have, you know, you have people around you, a support network, and that's mm. great, but sometimes you have to listen to yourself. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I just thought, you know, people will have their own opinions about this and yeah. all the rest of it. Just get on with it, Jenny. You know what you need mm. to do. But also as well, your support network, because they love you and you love them, sometimes you protect them from yes. actually how dark your thoughts are. Yeah. So you actually need to speak to someone who's removed. Yeah, and yeah. also oh. you feel like you're offending them, like saying mm. to my mum, oh, I, yeah. I think I need a counselor. She went, well, well, yeah. aren't I yeah. doing a good enough job? Yeah. Oh, yeah. but it's, uh, it's, do you know, 
now I think the gods handed you that lovely man on a plate in that coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Along with your in lovely steamy meat, meatballs. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're really pleased that everything's worked nice, out for you. Nice, great. And, and it's great. It's just... And I think things roll on, don't they? And with big heads, I mean, it's my, yeah. my dream job after all these years as well. Yeah. It's, it's my really dream job. And do you know well, why? Because we're making everyone laugh. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Everyone.